Tonight, calls for a report detailing allegations of harassment at the Port Augusta fire station to be made public. And the HMAS Melbourne docks in Port Lincoln. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. The Firefighters Union is demanding the MFS release a confidential report into allegations of harassment at the Port Augusta fire station. The union fears they're trying to cover up the situation. Garth Burley has more. Bullying, harassment, physical assault and unsafe work practices. These are some of the startling allegations levelled towards staff at Port Augusta's MFS station. The union claims 13 staff, many still working at the station, have filed complaints. Earlier this year, state fire bosses agreed to investigate the issues with independent officials visiting Port Augusta to conduct inquiries. The breadth and depth of uh, the allegations was far greater than even I had been led to believe. But the results of that investigation won't be known publicly, with the MFS said to keep it confidential in order to protect the trust and confidence of staff in the small community. How can we be sure that what they do as a result is appropriate and not a cover-up, unless we have some transparency? These allegations may be more widespread than first thought. Since first media reports, the union says it's been inundated with calls of similar stories of inappropriate behaviour in stations across the state. Broken Hill City Council says it plans to install more CCTV cameras around the city to improve public safety. It comes after councillors approved a new policy at their monthly meeting. Eyes in the sky with more on the way. We have cameras uh, right throughout Patton Park, Sturt Park, around the administration building, around the Civic Centre, uh, the fence line of the cemetery. Council adopted a new policy for the operation of CCTV cameras around the city, developed in partnership with the Barrier Police District. So Superintendent Paul Smith better. says it's a way of preventing crime and also prosecuting criminals. People tend to behave better when they know they're under CCTV and that, that's no matter where it is. And certainly if something does happen, it gives our investigators a place to start. Council says Queen Elizabeth Park will be the first to benefit from this new policy. New cameras will be installed along with smart lighting. It's scheduled between 10pm and 6am through Sturt Park and Patton Park that if um, motion sensors do detect someone walking through, they'll actually increase their brightness as well. So we've got the lighting as a deterrent. Vision recorded by the cameras will be erased after 31 days. Council says it will provide footage to police if requested. Anyone who does need it, we urge them to put an incident into the police as soon as possible so the police can access the footage from our council. Working together with council and the community to make the place safer, uh, that's what it's all about and has our full support. Patrick Ryankey, 7 Spencer Gulf News. 40 extra wind turbines will be constructed at Lincoln Gap after the South Australian government announced it'll sell the state's diesel generators. The move will double its energy generation capacity. Nine generators, two new private owners and the government is spruiking it as a positive for power bills. What we're doing is trying to put more generation capacity into the grid to lower prices. The state government is selling off the publicly owned generators for $219 million to allow more competition in the energy market. Part of the contract makes them specifically available for peak power days. But the opposition insists the generators weren't built to supply the grid full time and could short out. South Australia is now at heightened risk of blackouts and price increases. But one of the big winners could be the Lincoln Gap wind farm near Port Augusta. Next of Energy, the company behind the project, is one of the big ticket owners of the generators. The purchase will allow the energy hub to expand to more than 100 turbines. We can almost double it all the way up to 457 megawatts. The ambitious expansion could make Lincoln Gap one of the biggest wind farms in the country and Nexif says it will require an additional workforce of up to 150 workers. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Gulf News. 
why Alec could soon benefit from a new $4 million state government program aimed at improving regional coastlines. However, local MP Eddie Hughes says the amount is a pittance compared to the funding metro coastlines are receiving. Taking action to protect our coastlines, the Wyala Council is applying to secure funding from this state government initiative. Looking to make some applications to access some funding to enable us to do some targeted works there for the benefit of our community. Four million will be available over a four year period, a part of a $52.4 million coastal funding project to improve both metropolitan and regional coasts. In particular, there's an area that interests me, which is this issue of uh, sand drift. But the local MP says it's not enough funding for regional coastlines. All of regional South Australia, through the increased bin tax, are paying to have beaches done in Adelaide. And once again, regional South Australia just get a few crumbs off the, uh, off the metropolitan table. However, Stephen Canal says the funds available reflect the coastlines most at risk from flooding, erosion and sand dune drift. Coastal erosion we're seeing uh, upon our metropolitan beaches is huge. Uh, the issues that exist in the country are more, or more widespread but not as severe. Mr Hughes says the regions need to be prioritised. With nearly 5,000 kilometres worth of our coast, we'll get $4 million and Adelaide will get uh, over $40 million. So that is the, uh, that is the, the difference. Uh. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, the HMAS Melbourne anchors in Port Lincoln as part of its farewell tour and preparations underway in Wyala for Father's Day. Welcome back. HMAS Melbourne has dropped anchor in Port Lincoln today as part of a final tour around the country. The frigate will spend three days in port before heading to Adelaide. She's one of the last frigates left of her generation, currently on her final journey. HMAS Melbourne docked in Port Lincoln today for the first and last time. These class of ships have served Australia for the last 40 years on operations around the world and uh, I think this is an opportunity to give back to the people of Australia and let them have a look at their, their ship and, and what she's done. The ship's arsenal is capable of bringing down enemy aircraft, ships and submarines. Her advanced surveillance technology making her valuable to the Navy. We've done uh, deployments to South China Sea, East China Sea, uh, and most recently in support of uh, sanctions against the North Koreans. HMS Melbourne is over 138 metres long and weighs over 4,000 tonnes. It's capable of carrying a crew of 280, ready for deployment anywhere in the world. She's deployed to the Middle East about eight times, um, whether doing uh, operations in support of um, United Nations or uh, combined maritime forces. The warship will travel to Adelaide on Sunday as she heads to Sydney to be decommissioned, ending 27 years of service. Couldn't have asked for a better crew, a better program, a better ship to do that in. It's been fantastic. It's the last one of the fleet, uh, last one of its kind, so be a sad spot, I suppose, but bigger and brighter things coming. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. For many families, starting a health kit can be a tough challenge. It could soon be easier, with the Far West Local Health District launching a new healthy lifestyle program. Helping families wanting to be healthier. We all want to do the right thing. We all want to have healthy families, have our kids grow up um, and be healthy. Um, but it's really, really hard to achieve. Healthy Families is a free program that will be launched on September 17 at the YMCA. It's aiming to support families who make healthy lifestyle changes. Initially, they're going to have to do what we call a bit of a self-analysis for the family. Um, so they're going to go through, have a look at their health behaviours at the moment and, and sort of rank them. Miss Hurley says the program is not just about losing weight. There's a number of health aspects that can be focused on, including screen time. That's for both, you know, parents as well as the children in the family. The other thing is sleep. We just don't automatically think about that that could be affecting our health. Families will also receive weekly newsletters and check-ins with a dietitian during the program. When the family is doing the workshop, the children have the opportunity to try CrossFit and Tin Gym program for free in YMCA. For more information, contact the Broken Hill Health Service. Patrick Ryanke, 7 Spencer Golf News. A busy Broken Hill Street was closed off this morning after a trailer unexpectedly fell off a truck.
The driver was turning onto Galena Street just before 8 o'clock when the incident occurred. Police say the man uncoupled one section prior to the accident and was trying to enter a nearby car wash. No one was injured. However, traffic had to be diverted through a shopping centre car park. It took an hour to clear, with the road suffering partial damage. A Port Lincoln primary school student has chopped off her hair, donating it to Variety SA. Her golden locks will be used to make wigs for children battling cancer and alopecia. At just 11 years old, Katie Jessup wanted to make a difference for her community. The U5 student chopping off her hair, donating it to Variety SA. Just excited for an, a little girl who doesn't have hair just to get a new, a new look and some new hair. The primary school student getting her hair cut in front of the entire school. A last minute measure by mum and she was ready to say goodbye to her golden locks. Sadly I don't get to know the girl that, does, that gets my hair but that's fine. The mission to donate her hair started a year ago after her mum first proposed the idea. She's uh, very mature and she's got a big heart and she's very kind so I could totally see her doing this. Katie's also fundraising money along with her hair donation. With wigs costing $2,000 each, she says every dollar counts. We're raising awareness and money so it's easier for children to get wigs and cost is so expensive. If you would like to donate, visit Variety's website. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. What a wonderful selfless gesture. A local Wyala church is gearing up for Father's Day this weekend, celebrating dads from across the region. Shop owners are also busy and say it's not too late to snap up a last-minute gift. These volunteers are busy planning an afternoon of music and gifts. And the sacred past Adra Church is celebrating dads from all cultures at a musical performance on Saturday afternoon. And I thought, wow, what an opportunity to celebrate the fathers because they play a very important part in uh, the role of parenting. We'll bring people together, they'll bring families. So it's not just the fathers, but it'll be the uncles and the grandfathers. Fathers are looking to set a good example on their day. Very important day and, you know, even in my own example, um, through music, my children, you know, wish to follow in that footsteps. Local florists are also kept busy. They say dads deserve a day for themselves. It's really nice to see that the fathers are being spoilt too because it's not just about mum, it's nice to have a day just for dads because they do a lot in, for the kids too. And it's not too late to grab the perfect gift. We'll be here until 12 o'clock tomorrow and we're delivering Father's Day so we can do hampers with goodies in it, we can do flowers if dad likes flowers and we can do beautiful customised wooden boxes. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us after the break. Our football experts will preview the weekend's matches and we'll have the weekend weather forecast. Hello again. Finals footy is upon us across the region. Here's our experts with their tips for the weekend. Hello and welcome to the last minor round of SGL football. We've got two games in Puri with Port hosting the Lions at Port Oval and Solis taking on Central at Memorial Oval. The Lions will be looking for a big win with a chance of taking top spot and securing a home final. Port broke through for their first win of the season last week and will be looking to finish strongly in Coach Roberts' final game in charge. I'm tipping the Lions. The Solis Central game could be a rehearsal of next week's elimination final as the four is unlikely to change. I'm tipping Solis. At Port Augusta, it's South who face West at Central Oval. I'm tipping South. And that's all from SGL Football. It's finals time here in Wyala Football. Rapina and South Wyala will drop out for the season and the top four play this weekend. Big game Saturday. It's the second semi-final. First versus second. Winner through to the grand final. Loser gets another chance. It's West Wyala versus Central Wyala. West have beaten Centrals on all occasions so far this year. But a lot of people around town think Centrals is the team that could go all the way. But based on previous form, West will go through to another grand final. Sunday's game is the elimination final. It's North Wyler versus Runa Bay. Again, North have beaten the Bays each time this year. But last year, Runa Bay did knock out North in the finals where North were favourites. But I don't think it's going to happen this year and the Magpies to win. Welcome to Portland Footy Tips and the first week of finals. 
We see Waybacks hosting Marble Range at Centenary Oval. Waybacks has had the wood over Marble Range all year winning every time they've come against each other. In saying that, the last time they met, Marble Range won three quarters, but Waybacks' massive third quarter got them the win in the end. Waybacks are consistent all over the ground. Uh, Marble Range, on the other hand, they've had a lot of ins and outs all year. This week, however, I think they've got their best team of the season and should put up a huge fight. Either one of these teams can go all the way to the grand final. And for this week, I think I'm going to tip Marble Range to win this one by three goals. It's finals time in Broken Hill. The preliminary final between North and West. Cutthroat for the winner. They're through to the grand final against South for the loser. Don't worry about Mad Monday. It'll be Silly Sunday. Who's going to win? Five times they've played this year. West won the first two games, North the next three. But you know what? I think West can win the prelim final based on a big ruckman, some key forwards and a great midfield. If they win, which I think they will, they will go through to their first grand final since 2007. And can they beat South? We have to wait another week. For mine, the Robins tomorrow in the prelim final, 10 points. Weather now and after a frosty morning, it's been a bright and sunny day across the region. Port Augusta reached a top of 22 degrees, while in Port Perry 20, Port Lincoln 19, Broken Hill and Adelaide both 18. Checking the satellite and this patchy cloud over the southeast region, with onshore winds triggering a few showers. Mostly clear skies in the north and east thanks to a ridge of high pressure. On the Gulf waters tomorrow, northerly winds at 20 to 30 knots, with seas at 2 metres. And sunrise will be just after 20 to 7. We can expect mostly fine conditions tomorrow, apart from showers and rain over the Lower Air Peninsula and the West Coast. Port Augusta and Woodin are both looking at a top of 25 degrees, while a Quorn and Port Pirie 23, Broken Hill 22, Cleve 21, Port Lincoln, Coffin Bay, Kadena and Adelaide all 20 degrees and Clare 19. Now let's take a look at the four-day forecast. Port Lincoln can expect a partly cloudy day on Sunday. Showers on Monday, fine again Tuesday. Cleve will be fine and partly cloudy through until Tuesday. And Woodner will be sunny on Sunday, then partly cloudy into the new week. Wyler and Port Augusta both looking fine and partly cloudy Sunday and Monday, with some more sun on the way on Tuesday. Kadena remaining fine through the weekend and into the new week. Port Perry and Clare both expecting fine and partly cloudy conditions Sunday and Monday, sunny on Tuesday. And in Broken Hill, fine and sunny on Sunday, continuing into Monday and Tuesday. And that's the local news for tonight and the week. You can catch up and keep up to date via our Facebook, Twitter and YouTube pages. Just search for Spencer Golf Nightly News. I'm John Hunt, thanks so much for your company. I'll have updates later in the evening, but until then, have a wonderful weekend. On behalf of the team, it's good night.